Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse number 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 is the 666th chapter of the Bible. But all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. Tom says his entire life is all vanity. He's the king. There is a just man that perishes in his righteousness. The right man dies, and he dies in right. And there is a wicked man that prolongs his life in his wickedness. And you know what? That's a very true statement. I've heard many stories of preachers and pastors and Christians and college to get my degree and you hear here's this young man he gets out, out of school and he goes and starts at work and begins to work and then the Lord takes him home and you got a wife and a good Christian family and you got children she dies early and yet you got the wicked they die of an old age you know, you see these people, they live 100, over 100 years old, and they go in there and say, well, what's, what is your value of living? And not one ever says the Bible and Jesus Christ. You know, I drank wine and I, part, you know. And the psalm says, precious in the sight is the death of the saints to God. It also says in Peter, the Lord's not willing that any should perish. The fact is, one of the reasons, and not the reason, that a, a lost man will live longer is God's given him more opportunity to get saved before he dies and goes to hell. What about the Christian that dies early? The Lord wants him home. And we don't know. May the Lord prevent that, that, that man and that woman from a major sin, a major crisis. We don't understand that realm. I'm going through a thing right now just thinking about the Lord and he's all powerful and he is and there's nothing too hard for the Lord and he, it's true. Be not righteous over much. Neither make thyself over wise. Don't be too smart. Don't get too educated. Why should thou destroy thyself? Too much education will destroy you. You're a know-it-all. self-righteous and the higher the education a man gets the less likely are you going to be able to witness to him and have him to see God they've become too educated out of salvation and if they go into seminaries, I said correct seminaries. And they want to go learn the Bible. They're educated out of the Bible. They're educated out of nonsense. And they become such scholarly figures that they're able to correct God. They're able to, in the Greek, to, you know, know more than anybody else. And you touch not thy anointing, do thy prophets no harm. And the more education, the more. You, are against, you turn against God. God called four fishermen. And there's really any two men in the Bible in the New Testament would be Luke, a medical doctor. So there's exceptions to the rule. Matthew, a tax collector, there's exceptions to the rule. Uh, I think his name was Zenus. Paul speaks about a lawyer. There's exceptions to the rules. Be not over much, and as we just said that, be not, be not righteous over much, verse 16. Be not over much, verse 17, much wicked. Neither be thou foolish, and there's one thing that Solomon writes against is being foolish. Solomon wants you, don't be a fool. 
Why shouldst die? Why shouldst thou die before thy time? And I believe the Bible teaches there is a set date for a man to die. There was a king that God says, Isaiah, tell him set his house in order. He's going to die. He turned to the wall and he weeped and he repented and he. God says, I'm going to add to him 15 years so you can add life and you can subtract life. I mean, when you go about crossing the street without looking both ways, you're going to end your life a little early. Be not much wicked, tobacco, alcohols, undecent sex of adultery and fornication will kill you early. Listen, even the Surgeon General puts on a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> he puts everything but you're a fool. It is good that thou shouldst take hold of this. So, take hold of it. Grab onto it. Yea, also from, the, from this withdraw not thy hand. Don't let it go. <coughs> For he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. Forgive me, my throat's been dry. A man that fears God is going to overcome the lost man. The lost man will go to hell. A man that fears God is going to go to heaven. A man that fears God is going to go well of all from those that don't fear the Lord that go to heaven. A man goes to heaven, he's saved. That's it. That's all he's going to do. He's saved. But a man that fears the Lord and reads his Bible and he does what God tells him, he's going to get riches and rewards. There's the one that doesn't fear the Lord. Fear the Lord is what Solomon takes hold of. Wisdom strengthening, strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Solomon, and he says this in, 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 in Proverbs, the iron sharp is the iron. Men of wisdom, of men of wisdom, grow more in wisdom. And he says the, the strength of the wise, you can have ten mighty men. And wisdom will, will, is, has more strength than those ten mighty men. Samson, couldn't remember his name, had not much wisdom, but he had strength. The strength of wisdom was the Holy Spirit of God and in his hair. But not in wisdom. I mean... About the second time that that uh, Delilah said, you know, rise up and you would figure a man that was smart be lady, I'm leaving you. He never got it. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. In figure verse 15, all things that have seen in this, the days of vanity, there's a just man that perish in the righteousness. Then he said, there's not a, a just man. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's a just man that does right. But as far as man and in general, every single man's a sinner. Every man is guilty before God. There is no contradiction. Also take no heed unto the words that are spoken. Least thou hear thy servant curse thee. Alright? An employer. What's my employee saying? And he puts his attention to what his employee is saying. And he finds out his employees are, are cursing. And he gets involved. For oftentimes also thy own heart knoweth 
that thou thyself likewise has cursed others. Oh, you're paying attention to what your employees are saying about you, but what have you said about others? Uh-huh. You're going to get mad at them for what they say about you, and what about you, what you say to others? The moat that's in thy eye and the beam. Okay, verses 24, I mean, yeah, 23 down to 29 is real hard. Before we get that, here's the book order. Song of Solomon is written 1014 BC approximately. It's about love. Proverbs written about 1000 BC is about wisdom. Ecclesiastes is 977 BC is about vanity. Ecclesiastes is written after Proverbs. The wisdom book. And then the book we're in now, after all, our whole life goes to the grave. That what you do for today for the Christian, that what you do for Christ lasts. Everything else. Now, a problem with verses 23 to 29, the male, the male chauvinistic Bible. All this have I proved by wisdom. Everything he said. I put wise to it. And I said, I will be wise. But it was far from me. There was, There is no wisdom... Like the book of Proverbs in the vanity of the book of Ecclesiastes. It don't make sense. Sin, what the sin cursed world says Genesis 3, it don't make sense. I know the wages of sin is death, but why does a baby die? I know sin, but don't make sense. Why is a young man that serves the Lord, why does he go first in the wicked? It don't make sense. That's not wise. And as you grow in a Christian life and you're going through valleys as, as I've been, and you look at it as like, and then the devil turns and uses it. Yeah, you know, is anything too hard for the Lord? Anything too hard for God? Anything impossible? And the devil comes back, well, what about this? What about that? And man, you just got to say, hey, that's sin. That's life. I mean, the, the, the sin of Job is self-righteousness. That his sons and his daughters had to be killed. That those three friends had to drag it out chapter after chapter after chapter and just make things worse. There are people in pulpits today that don't deserve to be in pulpits. And Paul tells us they're of Satan. Now, Psalm is not writing about the new Jerusalem, new heavens, and new earth where everything will be all right and holy and righteous. Psalm is writing about this cursed word, earth. That which is far off and exceedingly deep. Talk about wisdom. Who can find it out? What is gravity? What is the wind? I applied my heart to know and to search. I try to go out and get it. I try to search it out and to seek out wisdom. I'm trying to find the answer. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you... I'm trying to learn how to apply. That's what Solomon's saying. And the reason of things... I'm trying to find the reason. What is the reason? And to know the wickedness of folly. I mean... The Bible says in Hebrews... The pleasures of sin. Can you imagine a Holy Bible says there's pleasures in sin? Can you imagine that? Hebrews 11. But it says for a season.
I believe Samson had his fun for a short time. And looking at the world and not the afterlife, not the eternal life, not heaven or hell. And you look at the unsaved, and, and as far as me as a street preacher, you look at, well, they're enjoying their life and they're just rejecting God. And Job said their children have children, their cows have baby cows, and they're just singing and dancing. It looks all wonderful and great on the earth. And you got to call yourself to... Well, God, in today's church age, why don't you do what you did with Ananias and Sapphira? They lied to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Dead. Man, that would get rid of the lie to see in church age. Man, that would be uh, rich and good with, and great. How wonderful. <laughs> uh, I guess we're not. <laughs> Lord, I repent. That's a free will. That's, hey, man wants to do what he wants to do. God's like, okay, go ahead. There's a day of reckoning coming. You've been warned by the scripture. Oh, I don't read the Bible. That's tough. You're supposed to. I did that today with the Bible. I studied the Bible. The Bible's there. You can get the Bible today. The King James Bible. Even the foolishness and madness. There's wickedness, there's folly, there's foolishness, there's madness. I'm trying to understand it. A man destroys his own entire life and family and job with, with alcohol. And even on this side of the new world, what we know as North America... There were Native Americans who were dying of cancer because they were smoking tobacco that the new that the old world never knew. Because you can't find tobacco smoking in the Bible and in Europe, it didn't come over to Sir Walter Walter Riley. There were Native Americans over here smoking that tobacco and dying of cancer. Grandpa died from that. That, that that smoking. I'll do it. That alcohol ruined my family growing up as a child. I'll have another one. What is the wisdom in that? You know, we do read about God in the book of Ecclesiastes. In the book of Esther, you can't find God anywhere in the book of the book of Esther. You know, you know one being that you don't find the book of Ecclesiastes? You don't find the devil. You don't find Satan. Solomon has never gripped, again, I say this word very loosely, philosophy. I use that word very loosely. The wisdom that God has given him, he, he has not seen things in the way of Satan and how destructive he is. Listen, we don't learn about the devil until Jesus said, you have your father the devil, he is a murderer from the beginning, and he's a liar, and the father of lies. And the biggest lie of alcohol is, well, I can do it, and I won't be that bad. You don't find Satan anywhere in the pages of Ecclesiastes as far as what we read so far. That's the understanding of the wisdom that Solomon don't understand. He does not know the power of the devil. And guess what the power of the devil is going to cause Solomon to do? He's going to fall in love with women. He's going to fall in love with women. He's going to fall in love with women a thousand times. And Solomon is going to turn his heart away from God to, to the devil. With the devil's many different names of Molech and Estar and Estar and Mary and Astrid and Baal and Baal. Solomon did not know the power of the devil. And I don't know if it's Paul or Peter, right? Our adversary, the devil, going about whom we seek is to devour. We, we know that today. I forget if it's Paul or Peter. Again, it says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. Evidently, Solomon was. And we're going to learn something about women in a moment. That Solomon's going to write, and they call him a male chauvinistic pig. And we, we see in the book of Proverbs, women are a problem. 
Women have been a problem ever since Eve. Who took the who did Satan come to in the garden? Adam? No, he went to the woman. Who caused the sin of, 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 of mankind? Eve. And yeah, Adam fell. Did not Proverbs say this woman, her door, her steps lead unto hell? Doesn't this woman buy her street corner and she calls? This man has a thousand wives. I think we ought to listen to him. Here we go. And I find more bitter than the death of a woman whose, the woman, heart is snares and nets. That woman is, she's, she's a trap. In the Old Testament, a woman can catch a man in adultery and the Bible says, and sins of adultery, you go to hell. There is no sacrifice. And there are women out there specifically to catch you, the devil puts out there. Mystery Babylon is a woman. Her hands as bands, handcuffs, who pleases God, whoso pleases God shall escape her. If God is not pleased with you, you're going to be ensnared with her. You're going to be entrapped with her. God will use her as judgment upon you. But the sinner that doesn't please God shall be taken by her. God may put that woman in that sinner's path. Okay, destroy him. Listen, God sent the lying spirit to Ahab because that's what Ahab wanted. God sent those women to, to Samson because that's what Samson wanted. God is a God that he'll give you what you want. You, be, be, you, be, you better be very careful what you want and ask for God. Because whether it be good or whether it be evil, God will give it to you. Why are there so many religions? All right, if the Catholic Church is wrong, why, why is there the Catholic Church? Because God said, hey, that's what you want? You want that mess? Okay. You want an organization that goes against the Bible, goes against Jesus as God? There's Jehovah Witnesses. There's the Mormons. There's atheism. There's science. There's evolution. There's all kinds of things out there. God will give you what you want. And if you want the truth, God will send a Bible preacher, a Bible to you. That you may get forth the truth and light. Behold, this have I found saved the preacher. Go back to chapter 1, verse 1. It's Solomon. Counting one by one. One person, two person, three person, four person, five person. To find out the account. Counting is a is a is a term for numbers. Which yet my soul seeketh. I am counting people one I'm I'm looking for somebody. But I find not. I haven't found them. One man among a thousand have I found. For every thousand men I found one man. It's the person I'm looking for. He's doing right. But a woman among those have I not found. That's a bold statement. That's a male chauvinistic statement. I counted. I looked at him. I can't find one woman. He's got a thousand wives. He can't find one of them that's right. Look what he said. One man among a thousand. How many wives did he have? Kind of interesting. He has a thousand wives. 
And if he's talking about his wives in general, I can't find one good one of them. Why did you marry him? Evidently, you didn't have wisdom, Solomon. Lo, this only have I found, that God has made man upright. It's not us that do right, it's God. But they have sought out many inventions to do evil, to do, to do good and to do evil. I mean, oh my eyes. Somebody said, take this take this tobacco plant and put it in paper and put it in a pipe and put it, wrap it in tobacco leaves and light it. And we'll come up with, with, with a lighter that we can light it. There's many inventions out there, good and evil. 